This is Chapter 9 of your textbook. In order to understand ethics, it is important to appreciate the basic concepts of values, belief systems, ethical theories, and morality. We're going to discuss ethics in nursing. Not only are nurses obligated to follow legalities of the nursing profession, ethical obligations will also apply. Let's talk about nursing ethics. The definition, it's a system of principles that govern the actions of the nurse in relation to patients, families, other health care providers, policy makers, and society. We have a code of ethics. It's implicit standards and values for the profession. Look at box 9-1 of your textbook for the list of ANAs, the American Nurse Association's code of ethics. And in box 9-2, we have the International Council of Nurses Code of Ethics. Now I want to talk about bioethics. First, let me describe it. It's an interdisciplinary field within the healthcare that has evolved with modern medicine to address questions that arise as science and technology produce new ways of knowing. Physicians, nurses, social workers, psychiatrists, clergy, philosophers, and theologians are joining to address ethical questions in health care. Some of the dilemmas for health professionals that are addressed are life and death, quality of life, right to decide, informed consent, alternative treatment issues, stem cell research, therapeutic and reproductive cloning, in vitro fertilization or donor insemination, and in surrogate motherhood, or organ transplantation. And then some of the dilemmas created by technology are illnesses that once led to mortality are now manageable and are classified as chronic illnesses. Cost is a consequence of prolonging life with technology and then we have the manipulation of DNA. So with ethical decision making is a process of answering difficult questions. What is safe care? When staffing is inadequate, what care should be accepted or refused? What does it mean to be ill or well? What is the proper balance between science or technology? And is the good of the humans? Where do we find balance when science will allow us to experiment with the basic origins of life? We need to balance science and morality. Nurses must examine life and its origins as well as its worth usefulness and importance. Nurses must determine their own values and seek to understand the values of others. Think about health care decisions. Decisions are made with the patient, family, other nurses, and other health care providers. Nurses must develop a reasoned thought process and sound judgment in all situations that take place within the nurse-patient relationship. Now we're going to discuss values formation and moral development. First, I want to provide some definitions. Value is the personal belief about worth that acts as a guide to behavior. Value system is the entire framework on which actions are based. Values clarification is a process by which people attempt to examine the values they hold and how those values function as part of the whole. And then moral development is forming a worldview and value system through an evolving, continuous, dynamic process that moves along a continuum of development. Nurses must examine their own value systems, values clarification, and then we have the Diane Eustall. She was the first nurse leader to describe the role of values clarification. Ethics acculturation. Nurses must commit to a virtuous value system. We have the world view. It provides a cohesive model for life and encourages personal responsibility for living life. It prepares one for making ethical choices. Learning right and wrong. Infants begin with no concept of right or wrong. If the need for basic trust is met, infants will develop the foundation for secure moral thought school-aged children. They learn that good behavior is rewarded and bad behavior is punished. They begin to make choices that are based on an understanding of good and bad. 
adolescents. They question existing moral values, and they have his or her relevance to society. They become more aware of contraindications to adult value systems. Adults. They strive to make sense of the contradictions and learn to develop own set of morals and values. They begin to make choices that are based on an internalized set of principles. Understanding Moral Development Theory Kohlberg's theory, its most widely accepted, is a cognitive developmental process that is sequential in nature. The rules are imposed by authority. Conformity is to be expected social and religious morals. Autonomous thinker who strives for a moral code beyond the issues of authority and reverence. Moving towards moral maturity. The quality of complex healthcare decision depends on the level of moral development of the professionals entrusted with decision making. Values essential for the professional nurse are altruism. This is concern for the welfare of others. Autonomy. This is the right to self-determination. Human dignity. This is respect for inherent worth and uniqueness of individuals and populations. Social justice, that's acting in accordance with fair treatment regardless of economic status, race, ethnicity, age, citizenship, disability, or sexual orientation. Continuing with moral maturity, we have ethics acculturation. This is integrity, personal growth, practical wisdom, and effective problem solving. Rights of conscience. Ethical theory and ethical principles can provide a basis for moving forward as a morally mature professional adult. So I want to define ethical theory. It's a system of principles by which a person can determine what ought and ought not to be done. Utilitarianism is rooted in the assumption that an action or practice is right if it leads to the greatest possible balance of good consequences or to the fewest possible bad consequences. Strongest approach for bioethical decision making. Which action will lead to the greatest ratio of benefit in not causing harm for all persons involved? Deontology is rooted in the assumption that humans are rational and act out of principles that are consistent and objective and compel them to do what is right. A decision is right only if it conforms to an overriding moral duty and wrong only if it violates that moral duty. All decisions are made in such a way that the decision could become universal law. I want to talk about the purpose of ethical principles. They establish common ground among nurse, patient, family, or healthcare professionals and society for discussion of ethical questions and ethical decision making. They permit people to take a consistent position on specific or related issues, and they provide an analytical framework by which moral problems can be evaluated. Autonomy. This is the principle of respect for the person primary moral principle. It's unconditional intrinsic value for all persons. People are free to form their own judgments and actions as long as they do not infringe on the autonomous actions of others. The concepts of freedom and informed consent are grounded in this principle. Beneficence. To promote goodness, kindness, and charity. To abstain from injuring others and to help others further their own well-being by removing harm. Risks of harm must be weighed against possible benefits. Common bioethical conflict results from an imbalance between the demands of beneficence and those of the healthcare delivery system. Non-maleficence implies a duty not to inflict harm, to abstain from injuring others, to help others further their own well-being by removing harm. Veracity, principle of truth-telling, belief that truth could at times be harmful if held for many years. Consumers expect accurate and precise information revealed in an honest and respectful manner. To develop trust between providers and patients, truthful interaction and meaningful communication must occur. Challenge is to mesh need for truthful communication with the need to protect. I want to look at the ethical decision-making model. So first we have the situation assessment procedure. You want to identify the ethical issues and problems. 
what is the issue, what are the hidden issues, what are the complexities of the situation, and is anything being overlooked. Then you want to identify and analyze available alternatives for action. What are the responsible possibilities for action? How do the affected parties want to resolve the problem? What ethical principles are required for each alternative? What assumptions are required for each alternative and what are their implications for future action? And then what additional ethical problems are raised by the alternatives? Then select one alternative, integration of multiple factors. It's a reasonable and purposeful decision results from the blending of ethical theory, principles, and values. Justify the selection. The decision maker must be prepared to communicate his or her thoughts through an explanation or the reasoning process used. So the justification process includes to specify the reasons for the action, to clearly present the ethical basis for these reasons, to understand the shortcomings of the justification, and anticipate objections to the justification. Usefulness and application of the situation assessment procedure. Certain ethical issues will be resolved within the context of the patient-provider relationship. Other ethical issues that may be more encompassing are addressed in group settings. Institutional ethics committees are common within healthcare organizations. The purposes of the committees are to provide ethics, education, and assistance with ethical policy development and to serve as a consultative body in helping to resolve ethical dilemmas. It is applicable to the daily practice level of ethical decision making and applicable to the policy making level where professionals come together to consider right and wrong choices that affect society as a whole. Okay, let's talk about bioethical dilemmas, life, death, and dilemmas in between. So the definition are dilemmas that pose a choice between perplexing alternatives in the delivery of health care because of the lack of clear sense of right or wrong. Nurses should consider the dilemmas that might arise in a given practice setting. First, we're going to talk about life. We had the bioethical abortion issue. When does life begin? Nurses serving in women's and children's health settings must be prepared to face this morally laden issue. Then we have reproduction issue. It's influenced by genetic screening, genetic engineering, and cloning. Now let's review death. Quality of life and definition of death issues with advances in health care, what is usual and what is heroic care has become unclear. Then you have the question of euthanasia and assisted suicide present with new ethical questions. Nurses in every setting must be prepared to consider end of life questions. And how about those dilemmas in between? First, we have the right to health care. Health care system are more selective in the amount and type of treatment that is offered as a result of managed care. Is each person entitled to the same health care package? Does ability to pay affect specific level of entitlement? How ethical is gatekeeping in the new managed care system? Access to health care and respect for human dignity are at the core of the nursing practice. Then we have allocation of scarce resources. Should the recipient of scarce resources be selected on the basis of quality of life, ability to pay? best prognosis, first come, first served. Nurses should be prepared to consider questions regarding allocation of scarce resources. Now I want to review a few ethical challenges. The challenge of veracity, the issues of alternative treatments and acknowledgement of uncertainty test truth telling. Which treatment among two or more is best for the patient? Which of the new drugs should be used? Should every patient be subjected to every possible form of diagnostic treatment? Should patient be made aware of questions and various options surrounding care? Is disclosure of uncertainty beneficial or detrimental? Then we had the challenge of paternalism. 
The provider tries to act on behalf of the patient and believes that his or her actions are justified because of a commitment to act in the best interest of the patient. Sometimes it interferes with the patient's right to self-determination. The challenge of autonomy makes a way for the crucial legal step of informed consent. When are patients competent to make informed consent decisions? Can family members or surrogates make decisions by proxy? Questions about informed consent are that raised for minors, confused older adults, mentally compromised patients, imprisoned patients, inebriated patients, unconscious patients, and those in emergency situations. Nurses also must take responsibility for understanding and educating people about advanced directives. Then we had the challenge of accountability. Nurses have an obligation to uphold the highest standards of practice, to assume full and professional responsibility for every action, and to commit to maintaining quality in the skills and knowledge base of the profession. Obligation to denounce a harmful action or potentially threatening situation may fall to a fellow member of the profession. To remain silent is to consent to the action of the threatening situation. This concludes the lesson of ethics in nursing. If you have any questions related to course content, contact the instructor.